Welcome to segment three of Citizens Forum being filmed on Wednesday, July 24th. Our guest in this segment is Will Smith. Um, Will has, I, I think you spent your career in sort of the financial world, is it? Yes, uh, financial and also uh, in factory automation, so I have. Factory automation and yes. finance, okay. And uh, we're going to be talking about the world of finance. Uh, the first thing you want to talk about is Detroit. Detroit's in the news this week because it is the largest American city to ever go bankrupt. So what's happening? Well, Detroit is uh, going into bankruptcy, and um, there are a couple of interesting things about that from the, from the standpoint of just a, a general overview of what's happening in the world. Detroit is probably not going to be the last city in the United States to go bankrupt. But there's some, there's some big problems from what... I, I look at this as, uh, as something that's a, almost a crisis. I mean, it's adding, it's adding a lot of new problems to the, the crisis which is already there. People losing their homes and uh, the, the banking system. Uh, nobody knows you know, which banks are going to fail next or what's going to happen with the, with the financial system, but lots of movement. There are lots of things going on. So anyway, the thing that's the most disturbing to me personally about the bankruptcy of a city uh, like Detroit is that uh, the, the, the uh, companies, the financial companies that have provided derivatives to uh, finance the in, to, to use as in the investment portfolio of the city, they get paid off very quickly. In fact, they get they get paid off, uh, as I understand it, before the the uh, settlement is even reached. So they have access to those funds. I don't know exactly how that works, but what I understand is that the pensioners, which are the people who are uh, are due money from their work, and that may be a lifetime of work in some cases, because uh, city employment is Pretty considered stable. very stable. And now these people are all of a sudden faced with um, the prospect of having to earn a living in their retirement. And I, I just, I, I see that as, as not really being very fair. And I also, uh, I see that as just, this is just a little picture. What's happening in Detroit is a picture of what's happening all over the place. And uh, I don't know, that's, that's disturbing to me. And I hope that it's on people's consciousness that this isn't, this isn't something that uh, should be allowed to go on. So just, just to go over it again, um, Detroit holds a lot of derivatives and those get paid off right off the top. Yes, as I understand it, there's the... Detroit there's has a, to pay those. Well, there, it's already paid. I think what happens is that the money uh, on some of those derivatives is held in some kind of an, an account where it's not... It, it, there's no way that it could be... Uh, it, it has to happen. I mean, that, in, in other words, the derivative contract uh, states that this is going to happen, so that's what happens. But I think that's true in, in, in the United States and Canada, that derivative contracts are trump virtually other, any other claim as a, as a creditor. And then the other thing, I, I just want to lead in with that to, I had an experience at a bank here. I had a check drawn on a, a local bank, of one of the, larger, well, the largest banks in Canada. And um, I walked in there just to get it cash because I didn't want to walk over to my bank. I don't own a car. And uh, I was given a, a, <laughs> a lot of trouble. I finally did get it cashed. But I didn't understand why it was such a big deal because the manager uh, of the tellers had to come out and talk to me, and I felt I felt very intimidated because I, I didn't feel like I was being this was being explained to me in a nice way. It was more like something. It felt like why don't you know this already? <laughs> okay, so just just to explain, let, let's say I wrote you a check. My bank is the Royal Bank, which wasn't the bank in this case. Right. But let's say I wrote you a check. You then go into the Royal Bank and just say, I want to cash this check. It's written on the Royal Bank. Well, yeah, from what I, from the way I Instead think of going of, to your own bank. The way I think of banks is, uh, I think that generally people have an expectation that if they put their money in the bank, that that's, that that's still their money and the bank is holding it for them. Because historically, that's, that's how banking came about, is that you were, the banks were just storing money and then they would issue receipts for money that was on deposit. And now we've just gone to the, Point where there's really it's not really money anymore. It's just these are just debt chits. They're just saying I owe you this, I owe you that, and so I can see how 
that why banks don't want to give you cash. I mean, it's a pain in the neck to deal with cash. But the thing that I see happening is I, I understand now more why people are going to places like Money Mart because they've just sort of been disenfranchised from the banking system and they, they don't want to fool around with it. And uh, of course, the, I, I don't really know why this is true. But the thing, the thing that I wonder about is if that's how people are treated, how much longer is this system going to last? On, the, on one of the previous shows, we talked about how the, um, some of the statistics are changing so that more and more people are in the black market. I think 50% in 2009, two thirds in by 2015. So I, I can just, I'm beginning to see why that's true because it's just, it's a, it's a hassle. It's, it's, and people, people like to use cash. I mean, they're, they're used to using cash and yet we're getting more and more away from that. So I just wonder, I guess the thing that I wonder about in my mind is, is it going to be a surprise someday if the banks, if the banks do fail and, uh, you know, that people don't want to participate in that system anymore? It seems like we assume in our society that everybody wants to participate in the banking system, but what's really happening is people are little by little pulling out of it. And then you had a guest, uh, Maggie Champion, I think her name was, who had started a let system, her own currency system. And that to me is another indication that people are somehow feeling like there's something wrong with the system and it's too complicated, I don't understand it, so I want something that I can understand. I can, it's something that, that I can understand. And really, in reality, the overhead of the system that we're seeing now is very great. There, there are a lot of things going on. There's a, a lot of money in the system uh, that is, is just money that people don't understand, like derivatives. And what is going to happen? If you read annual reports, I read the annual reports of uh, the three of the largest banks in Canada, and they do talk about their derivatives, but they say things like, normally the, the, uh, the notional amount of the derivative does not change hands, but that implies that it might, it's not impossible, and then if you look at the notional, account, uh, notional amounts of these derivatives being, in the case of like Royal Bank, the, the, it's buried on a footnote on, on a, a very, uh, <laughs> a page that's way in the back. Now, isn't this, isn't this kind of deceptive? I, I just, we, we're trying to figure things out. We're tr we depend on uh, people saying things to us and certifying that their opinion uh, of a financial statement is true. But what if this is all not true? That's, that's kind of what I'm seeing is that people aren't, aren't trusting these things anymore. And so they're just backing off. So what's the end result of that? Is that, is that, uh, is that what's going to happen? <laughs> I well, wonder what, what about that. What would you say is the state of the Canadian banks? The big I honestly don't know. I, I, what I'm trying to say is I'm looking, I, I'm looking for metrics that are outside of the, of the system or the, the, just the way people act because the way people act is reality. And, and so we're seeing this, this shift. Why are there so many money marts now? That's a good question. Why are there? I mean, that's, that's definitely a growing business. These payday loan companies under many, many different names is a growing, and they're charging, uh, as I mentioned once or twice, 600% a year interest to people who can't get a bank account and, right. and, and aren't allowed to deal in the banking system. It's mostly the working poor, I guess. Um, and they're charging 600% a year interest. Um, now, what people do is take a very short-term loan, they hope, and pay it off very quickly. Um, you know, so they're not paying that much in real money, but the actual interest rate is 600% a year. Uh, you know, at least at Money Mart, it's 599%. Some others are a little bit, a little bit less. Yeah, so this, these, these are things that I'm, I'm noticing that, I mean, I think everybody just wants the, the system the, to go along in the status quo and, and little changes when they're necessary. But what I'm seeing is evidence that, that that's not really what's going to happen. I, I just see that, that uh, a lot of it's just kind of wishful thinking when you're hiding things instead of showing. The, I mean, the purpose of language is to communicate. And when we start using language to deceive, and when we start using annual reports to hide the true financial uh, status of a company, how is it possible for me, whether I'm using it as, whether I want to use the, the company uh, for a bank or whatever it is, or if I want to invest in it, how is it possible for me to make an accurate assessment? I, I find that to be 
a really, that's a, a big question that, that we really need to ask ourselves because that's how our system works. So supposedly. you're saying that, uh, and that's the next thing you wanted to talk about is language, uh, how we interpret what we're told and uh, and is there truth actually being told to us? Yes, I, I think what, what I'm seeing more and more is that there, there are people who create some kind of an agenda or a plan, whether it's smart meters or rail transportation or bridges or whatever it is, and, and they create a sales department that sort of is going to say, this is what you guys want. But if you if you really come down to it, is that what we really want? Like I was, I mentioned that I was reading a, an article in Spanish language newspaper about how in Spain um, there's legislation evidently to make collecting sunshine as a private individual impossible. If you, if you collect some photons with solar panels, there's up to a, a, it's a huge fine that could be levied on you. And you have to add, wonder, now is that, was that arrived at democratically? Did people, were people asked? I know in the United States, for example, there's a, there are laws that you can't collect water uh, on your property, and that's surprised a lot of people. So I'm just wondering, how are we getting to these decisions? Are, are we arriving at them through a democratic process? Are people really being consulted? Or is it more of a top-down approach? That's what it seems to me that we're getting to more and more. And you've brought this to my awareness, that it's really been a, a kind of a gradual slide into this place where we we don't, we're not paying attention to what's happening. We just assume that these professional politicians are educated enough and know what is best for us and then come to find out later, it's really not. And so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm having some basic uh, uh, crisis of uh, figuring out what's going on and, and how do we deal with it too because uh, it just seems like we're handed a, a decision that's been made a lot of times with and, it's, and there's nothing we can do about it at that point. Yeah, so what's the, the world between exactly that, the, the world of finance and the fact that decisions are being made based on kind of incorrect evidence that we're given yes. and top-down decisions that don't, really, that don't really include us. I mean... So, how, how do we, I, I mean, the finances of a nation and the finances of the world now, because it's all linked together, it's, it's important. We don't want all of that to necessarily collapse because it's going to be one heck of a mess if it does. Yes, that's true. And, but so but if, you look at, if you look at what's really happening, there are a, there's a lot of movement going on. For example, the U.S. dollar used to be the, the uh, without question, the reserve currency of choice. But now we see all these agreements that uh, countries are starting to trade in yuan, the Chinese currency, and the ruble, the, the, uh, some of the developing countries, Russia, Brazil. They're making contracts outside of the, the uh, jurisdiction of the United States, directly trading. Where is that going to end? I don't know. I, I don't have, I don't, I'm not saying I know what's going to happen. I'm just trying to figure it out. And, and what, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is how much of my own worldview is dependent on deception that I've, I've just incorporated into my worldview just because I just assume that I'm being told the truth. And, and then when I start digging around in annual reports and I see maybe this is going to be okay, we're not sure on a footnote in six-point type and it's and you know the problem could be just huge I'm just I, I don't know I, I've got a lot of questions Jack <laughs> I'm not getting answers I'm getting questions but I think it's a healthy thing for us to uh, to question how do we how do we kind of like here we are right it, it's 2013 the situation is as it is um, I mean, you can certainly say that the financial world is teetering at times, it seems. Mm -hmm. How do we stop that teetering and start to build something that works for people, that, that, that lets us use money to do what money is supposed to do, 
but, but is creating a better and more democratic world at the same time? Well, I'm hoping that, uh, that the, the uh, political system will notice that, like on Salt Spring Island, they have an independency, independent currency system, and then now this let system that we heard about. I'm hoping that the politicians notice and you know, think, well, gee, maybe these people are worried about something that's real and uh, start doing something about it. Because I don't think we can, I mean, unless there's a collapse, it's not going to happen from the ground up, right? I mean, it does have to be, this, a system like this has to be implemented from the top down, or it has to be changed at least from the top down. So I think that that's probably the first thing is just for people to realize that there are still some problems and that, uh, you know, let's, let's be concerned about uh, what we're, what our retirement, if we, if we have a, a retirement uh, account, let's worry about it. Let's, let's look at it and not just believe that with a pat on the head from our, our uh, financial advisor that everything's going to be okay because maybe they don't know, maybe they're not watching. So I like, I like the things that are being done by the, the people who are involved in community, the let systems and uh, you know, gardening, so you're growing your, your garden and you're less dependent on the system. You're not, you're not uh, so dependent on the system. I like those things. Um, How big a hit did people take in, in 2007, 2008 when there was this huge collapse? I mean, what happened to people? Well, some people were ruined. I mean, some people, lives have been <laughs> changed forever. They'll, they won't recover. I saw a program on television about it last night. I think it was on the Knowledge Network, but I'm not sure. And, you know, they were interviewing people in the financial world. And, and basically the tone of that television program was that we didn't know. We, you know, this was worse than we could have imagined. Yes, some people were greedy, but it was kind of all an accident. And, you know, that's not what happened at all in 2008. It right. was a plan. It was carried out. People made fortunes and people lost fortunes. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Will, thank you very much for doing this. And thank you. thanks for watching that was this a pleasure. segment of Citizens Forum. Bye-bye.